besides the camaraderie that we'll be sharing today, besides being united as one army and having our allies here today, let us remember, let us not forget those Filipino American soldiers who lost their lives and paid the ultimate sacrifice. In April 1942, during World War II, as many as 80,000 U.S. and Filipino troops surrendered to Japanese forces after fighting for nearly three months in the Battle of Bataan on Luzon Island, Philippines. The Japanese then force marched the prisoners nearly 70 miles in oppressive heat and humidity from the Bataan Peninsula to Camp O'Donnell near Tarlac. Prisoners were given little to no food and water and treated inhumanely by their Japanese captors. Many were regularly beaten and executed. Those who survived then faced years in Japanese prisoner of war camps where many more died. For most of us, the Bataan Death March is just something seen in a history book or maybe social media around its anniversary. But for Captain Kathy Reyes with the 19th Expeditionary Sustainment Command, it's more personal. Her grandfather was there. My grandfather uh, was the second lieutenant during World War II in the Philippines when the war broke out. And he survived the Bataan Death March. And after that, he was also a POW and he endured many hardships. For the past 32 years, White Sands Missile Range in New Mexico has hosted the Bataan Memorial Death March in honor of the heroic service members who defended the Philippine Islands during World War II. This year, however, thanks to COVID, organizers decided to make it a virtual event where participants could complete the 26.2 miles from anywhere in the world. Hey, sorry, bro. USFK! USFK! Woo! Sound like we're gonna have I've always wanted to participate um, as a marcher in the Bataan Memorial Death March because of my grandpa's um, involvement. What started out with just two four-person teams quickly grew to seven teams and 40 participants to include the USFK Command Sergeant Major and several members of the Philippine Armed Forces who are assigned to the United Nations Command. I get a phone call from this weird number. I didn't even know who it was. And it was Sergeant Major Tag saying, hey, I'd love to join you in the Bataan Memorial Death March. It's important for the team to do this. One, to, to, you know, to recognize the hardship that they, the Bataan Death March uh, itself, but it's, it's also to, to work together as a team to accomplish a common mission. No matter how tough or how hard it is, it, we have each other as a team uh, to, to help one another accomplish that mission. Good job, fellas. Good job. Hey, remember, you got one more checkpoint, you turn around, you come home, all right? In the moments where you're not talking to your so friends you and your battle buddies, back. and you start thinking about what they went through, it definitely put things in perspective, because you know they weren't marching to freedom, they were marching to the camp, and that also adds another level of seriousness to the event. I always thought of him as a hero, and, and I think he truly is, because he survived the Bataan Death March, he, en he endured all the hardships of being a POW, um, fighting malaria while he was in the POW camp, and I wanted to pay tribute to him and just preserve his legacy. Reporting from Camp Henry, Daegu, Republic of Korea, I'm Kevin Bell.